welcome back to the Cities and Channel. You're all staying safe and well. Our continuing look at City Number Nine. Yes, this is part two. So if you've not watched part one of this, please, uh, there will be available in the links and in the description below. But please uh, get along and watch part one. It's sort of ruined part two if you've not watched part two, uh, part one. So yes, we're looking at City Number Nines, and we're looking at a gentleman who came to City in 1971. Yes, yeah, so I was I was in the Platt Lay with my mate then in 1971, uh, watching the blue right at the front. So I mean, you watch some of those. Uh, late 60s, early 70s games, if you look at the, the Platt Lane stand, uh, you probably will see, I've seen me, I've, I've seen I've seen kids, I've, I used to have a Parker on some days, sometimes I had a budgie jacket on as the time passed by, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure I'm on that front row somewhere at times, anyway, that's that's when I did that, before before I started roaming around and ended up in the kickbacks, of course. So anyway, part two of Win Davis, uh, I digress, of course, who was at City, uh, just over a season, wasn't at City for very long, but had a, had a big impact on the on certainly on the one full season he played in. So we'll we'll look at part two. In part one, we talked about Win joining, uh, and he'd settled down very very quickly, scoring goals and allowing allowing players like Francis Lee uh, to also get the best of them as well with him alongside. So in part two, we'll see how sort of Win helps us push to the top of the table. Uh, but then, sadly, is very, very fast fall from grace the following season. So we'll talk about that. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notification. It's great to have you on board. Everything City, of course, past, present and forever, as long as I'm here anyway. So uh, please join me. And if you are pushing buttons or you've already pushed those buttons, you can just press that little like button. I'm just trying to get about 20 likes for these vlogs. It's not a massive total, so if you can help me towards that, it'd be much appreciated. Make an old City fan very, very happy. And of course, any memories you've got of uh, Win Davis yourself, uh, give us a shout. Right, let's have a look. Let's have a look at part two. So we've got to, yeah, a win. We've got a win at West Bromwich Albion on the 7th of October. And we were doing okay. We are doing okay. We sat fourth. In fourth spot on 15 points, uh, three behind surprise leaders at the time. Yeah, uh, Sheffield United, they'd been promoted this, the previous season. They were sort of uh, blazing away there. Of course, as we'd finished that West Brom game, they'd literally just suffered the very first defeat of the season up to that stage. They'd won eight and drawn two. So, uh, of course, that defeat at least closed a gap, a gap a little bit. But they were surprise leaders. As Christmas approached, Win and City, we did keep up our good form. Win scored in a 2 0 win at West Ham away in November. Uh, Lee one pen got the other, yes, another penalty. And he scored it, he scored, Win Davis scored in a 4 0 win over Ipswich at May Road on the 11th of December. Bell, Lee, and Mellet, the others, the others on that. This left City sat second in the league behind United, but no, nope, it wasn't. It wasn't Sheffield United, the early pace setters. By that stage, it was yeah those guys from up the road, Manchester United, who took over at the top of the league, and they were four points better off. By eighth of January, though, we'd closed the gap just to one point. Surprisingly, Wynn Davis's goals in a 1 1 draw at Spurs on the 8th of January and previously on New Year's Day in a 2 2 draw at home with Forest, uh, Lee got the other one, penalty. Yep, uh, will be his last goal scored for the season. But, but, we win, didn't mean he was playing badly, but we win Davis leading the line, five wins out of six in late February, up to and including a 1 0 home win over Chelsea on the 18th of March. Uh, yeah, we were clear, we were at top, we were three points. Clear at the top, clear of three points clear of Derby. They had a game in hand, which was two points for winning those days, so we'd still be top even if they won that. So we're doing very, very well. But but of course, Malcolm Allison had brought in another striker. Uh, yeah, perhaps to a company, perhaps to to get the best out of Win Davis. I'm not too sure. But interestingly enough, he brought in to play alongside Win Davis in, in the front line and as well, as well as Francis Lee, Colin Bell, etc. He brought in a certain guy that we all know called Rodney Marsh, who made his debut in that Chelsea win we just talked about. So things were looking up. Uh, no, no, no reasons to panic. Marsh joins. We win the first game where he's playing. Uh, obviously, beneath it all, there is a slight problem, but we're not really aware of that. Um, when Davis was confident of another achievement, yes, off the pitch this time, not just a bit away from football. He was, he was apparently. Uh, 
said by his teammates, uh, a keen listener to music. He enjoyed his music. And, uh, yeah, when Davis himself expected and commented, he expected big things from a, a new single that was out. Yes, that the City team had recorded at Straw, Strawberry Studios, of course, uh, prior to the, this Chelsea game. Uh, sadly, though, the boys in blue didn't chart. That's no good, is it? Oh, well, uh, we still love it to this day, don't we? But sadly, as well, as well as that flop, well, not flopping, because it did sell a few copies, but it didn't chart. But sadly, on the pitch, we struggled as well. It wasn't to happen on the pitch. And uh, Wynn missed only his second game of the season after going off injured in the penultimate game, uh, a penultimate game that actually put uh, put pay to any City title hopes, uh, a 2-1 loss at Ipswich, and that totally killed it off uh, just before the final home game against champions-elect Derby County. And despite, despite City, Beating them without Win Davis, who had been able, unable to play, despite a 2 0 City win in front of over 55,000 at Main Road, it was too little too late as Derby won the title just by one point from Leeds, Liverpool, and us back in fourth. Yeah, just one point between us and those three. Win, so if we beat Ipswich, we would have been fine, wouldn't we? Perhaps if, perhaps if Win Davis hadn't been took off uh, injured, we would have won that. Who knows? You never know, do you? Win Davis, despite the lack of goals after Christmas, had fitted in pretty well that season. And the man to benefit was indeed Francis Lee, who would eventually score 35 goals in that season, including a record breaking 13 league penalties, one FA Cup penalty, and one League Cup penalty for a total of 15 penalties scored. Yeah, and he didn't win them all. Win Davis was involved in that as well. So uh, Francis Lee gets a bit upset if you say he, he you know, uh, he died for all the penalties because. Uh, you know, as a ratio, he didn't. He didn't win. He probably won five or six of those 15 penalties. The following season, yeah, things started seemingly well as we we actually played in, in the FA Charity Shield. We were invited to play that uh, against Aston Villa. And when we won that uh, with Wynn Davis playing at number nine. But Malcolm Allison probably had other ideas at this stage. He'd, he'd had a, he'd had a mid uh, cl- close season to mull it over. Uh, and he did actually fancy another player to take on that number nine shirt, uh, which would obviously see uh, Win Davis ousted. And unfortunately for Davis, Malcolm Allison was to prefer the flamboyant, of course, Rodney Marsh to lead his attack than the giant Welshman. And it soon became evident, despite Win Davis starting the 72 73 season in that number nine shirt, uh, that things weren't going to go quite right. There was an interesting ad, actually. Uh, there'll be a picture, an image on the screen. I've got it behind me on the wall here in the opening uh, match day home program for that season. And it's a poster. It's, a, it's an ad for posters of the city's five big strikers. Of course, you've got Summerby, you've got Bell, you've got Marsh, you've got Lee. And of course, you've got Wynn Davis as one of our top five strikers. So if you look at it very closely, uh, he's a little bit out of it at the back. He's actually almost hidden by Francis Lee. Uh, so I think, as you say, every picture tells a story, doesn't it? So I think that sort of uh, gave the game away just a little bit if, uh, if you were thinking ahead at the time. But uh, interest, interesting picture. That's, that's, that's uh, it's, you know, I'm sure it wasn't meant to give the game away, but it was certainly interesting, that picture. Uh, I really, uh, I thought that sort of summed it up, really. City with Wynn Davis starting the first three league games, but with two defeats, he actually got injured again in match three, our first win of the season on August the 19th, a 3 0 win over Norwich. He missed the next three, but was back at number nine for three games in September, two in the league and one in the League Cup. But he didn't finish the uh, match away at Birmingham on the 9th of September in a 4 1 loss. He'd miss out, actually. Our next game will be a home game in the UEFA Cup. He'd miss out on this uh, at the time. He'd obviously again, struggling, but he would miss out on this UEFA Cup match with Valencia. In fact, City played Valencia on the 13th of September, and it's a total surprise, and we didn't see it coming. Obviously, probably Malcolm Allison did, and perhaps Wynn Davis to some extent. On the 13th of September, we played Valencia, but on the 14th, uh, he was signed on the 14th of September. The very next day, I don't, he wasn't over, he wasn't included in the Valencia squad. He was signed by Manchester United uh, manager Franco Farrell. So he signed on the 14th of September and the big Welshman had surprisingly left us after just six appearances six appearances that season plus the Charity Shield appearance. Alison hadn't wasted much time in casting the big Welshman aside. 
when he left, we sat bottom, we sat next to bottom, sorry, of the first division with only United, only United below. So he left us to join United and we were second bottom and United were bottom. And he only spent one season at United before moving on and a struggling United it was at the time as well. Uh, but it was agreed that Wynne Davis and a certain Ted McDougall's forward partnership was one of the reasons United survived in the league that season. But we'd, we'd seen how good he could be when he, when he was playing for us. Wynne Davis was a hero at both Bolton and Newcastle, uh, although he got a bit, as as he did say early on when he joined City, he got a, a few problems at Newcastle, that's why he left before his brief stay at City, though he was possibly on a hide to nothing joining City with such established strikers at the time. He was probably on a hide to nothing joining City under Malcolm Allison, who he never quite knew what was going on behind uh, uh, what he was thinking, to be honest with you. And the arrival of Marsh, Definitely or possibly sounded the death knell for his stay at City. I remember the famous song, uh, singing the Mighty Wind song. Uh, I remember singing it at school. I remember probably singing it on the terraces as a kid or in the plat lane or trying to sing it because a lot of the songs didn't get around to the plat lane. They started in the kid packs and they sort of, uh, you know, occasionally we got involved in it, but very rarely. So that's why every, I think that's why everyone, every kid wants to get the kid packs at some stage. And uh, it was very unlucky. The Mighty Wind, I'd say we sung the Mighty Wind song. All right, no way. You know, when when we look back and compare him to Belly and some of yeah, he's, he's perhaps on unfortunately a little bit of an afterthought. But he had he was unlucky. He was unlucky not to win a title medal in that one season. Uh, played almost every game. I don't think he only missed a couple of matches. And of course, uh, players like Bell and Lee either side of him definitely gained and flourished from his presence in the team. His big presence, good player, he used to take other players out of the game. And let's face it, Francis Lee, that season was, was on fire. But, you know, and part and parcel of that was because of the relationship with Wynne Davis. Said the daddy and Bolton, they knew each other. Uh, and I think that most mostly, I would have thought, uh, I don't think Francis, Francis Lee had nothing like that sort of scoring thing, even though he got a lot of penalties. He didn't, I didn't get anywhere near that scoring levels before or after Wynne Davis. So I think uh, that partnership brought City... Very, very close to glory and all all credit to Wynne Davis. To Wynne Davis himself, I can only say thank you from me and all the City fans who, who were able to watch you. And, uh, yeah, you and your great leap and uh, a great song, of course. I mean, we probably nicked it off Newcastle fans, but, hey, there you go. That's all fairs in love and war, isn't it? Hope oh, you enjoy this, guys. Uh, let me know any memories you've got of Wynne Davis and I hope you enjoy this little look at City number nine. So look at a... Uh, Look at Win Davis, a Welsh, a Welsh player, a Welsh, Welsh wizard, Win Davis, and uh, say so just let me know if you've got any memories. Thanks for watching, guys. Please, until we meet again, I know I have one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now. <laughs>